So we're back at the box. Surely this has to be a mistake. I mean, we spent all of last episode building, which is uh, unlike me, uh, and designing an interior for our new base of operations. But no, this isn't a mistake. Instead, we're going to be building ourselves a farm over here. Specifically, a mob farm. The reason we're doing it over by our box, which you can see in the distance over there, is that I felt this was going to be more of an Egyptian-themed build, and so putting it in the desert made a lot more sense. As you can see, we have a large amount of sandstone. Uh, what we're going to be doing is a little bit different. I'm going to be releasing a tutorial uh, straight after this video comes out uh, for an early game mob farm, one that you can build uh, down low on a level so you're not having to go up high. It won't give the best rates. Uh, it assumes that you haven't got any uh, bamboo uh, to make the scaffolding yet. And you could even forego a trident. The rates won't be great, but it'll get you some early game resources. However, we're a bit more confident in uh, being up high, even if I don't yet have wings, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to get ourselves something uh, a little bit better uh, and a little bit more fruitful. Uh, so first and first, let's get ourselves some bamboo to join our sandstone. And as you can see, we have ourselves some bamboo. Uh, it turns out that there is a jungle a little bit past uh, the village over there, uh, which was fantastic. It meant what I thought might be a bit of a trek looking around to find them uh, was nice and easy. Obviously, I appreciate not everybody is going to find bamboo quite so easily. Uh, maybe you wanted to use chunk base. Uh, I've only used that to find the nether fortress so far. Um, but if you don't want to be doing something like that, then check out the uh, video, the tutorial that I'm going to be putting out uh, explaining how to build a uh, mob farm when you might not yet have the resources that you will do in the later game. But let's harvest some of this up uh, and get ourselves some scaffolding. Okay, the scaffolding is now in place, which is uh, lovely. Uh, now we need to get ourselves a trident. Time to go drown hunting. Well, that was a wee bit unexpected. Thank goodness for a feather falling. I was just mining out some uh, coal here uh, when, yeah, it turned out there was a big drop and I um, accidentally fell through it into a giant dripstone cave. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. All right, we're going to come back and explore this later this episode. Uh, I don't have, I've got one set of 42 torches on me. Uh, that is not going to be enough for exploring that cave, but oh, that looks cool. We'll be going back down there. Now, anyway, I'm on a hunt for drowned. Well, I'm out in search of an ocean. I forgot a bed, which is not a great idea at night time. Uh, and um, <laughs> I'd love to know what happened there. Oh, dearie me. Anyway, an ocean. Can somebody give me an ocean, please? Ha-ha, trident wielding drowned. Okay, um, yeah, if you could stop hitting me with that. Yeah, yeah that's not going to... Look, pal, I'm getting quite angry about this. You better drop a trident. Oh, you didn't. You cad. Uh, um, <laughs> you're right there, buddy. I would leave you to it, but you're taking up the mob cap. Any more drone? Cooey drowned. No need to be shy. I would just like your tridents. Pretty please. I spy a village. I'm going to leave sleep the night away. Ooh, drowned with a trident. Come here, drowned with a trident. That could be very fortuitous timing. Did, did you... I think I saw one, didn't I? All right, let's get rid of you first so you're not... No? Oh, was it copper? Oh, I did! Yes! Unfortunately, my build requires three more. Uh, yeah, I should have done a more sensible build than that, I know. Sorry, Mr. Villager, I need your bed. All right, we've got a few zombies to kill. Go and protect the village. Over here, Mr. Husk. I said over here. Any others? Yeah, look, I'm trying to save you, okay? No need to hmm at me. Ooh, you have an iron golem. That's nice. And you've got quite the cave up there. 
Well, the village was a little bit of a bust. I did borrow a bed, uh, a couple of cactuses and some sea pickles, which is nice. Uh, now on with trying to slay some drowned. No trident, you're useless to me. Hmm, did find another jungle though. Trident, come here. Oh, you didn't give it up. And you're useless. Well, that was a big old boy. Six tall. Impressive. I thought these things are meant to be rare. We got one. And there's another one over there. It's not drowned though. And there's that pillager outpost we saw in episode one. I'll be coming back for a raid farm soon. Don't you worry. In the meantime... Yeah, drowndy, 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 drowned. Useless! Still useless. Um, boy, is this a village right next to a pillager? Can I just say this is the worst idea ever? If I go kill the captain, you're getting raided immediately. And you've got a iron golem, and you guys are crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's go free this other iron golem. At least he'll be able to help you. You're free now, big guy. Go! Go! No, seriously, go. There we are. Thank you. When they all come attack, I would like it to be known that this is not my fault. I can't go kill them now. I, I want to go raid there, but you guys will die. Okay, fine. Can't kill drowned. <laughs> well done, Iron Gollum. Uh, as I said, I can't kill uh, drowned because I can't find them. And I can't kill pillagers because I'll just create a raid. Uh, apparently, Iron Gollums have it coming. Good work, everybody. In the meantime, I'm getting a render range so these guys don't get hurt anymore. Useless. Useless, I tell you. Useless. Drowned with a trident. Drowned with a trident. Oh. Did you drop it? Did you? No. Oh, go away, useless. Nobody asked you. Ooh, two drowned with tridents. One of you's got to be kind to be at least, haven't you? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Oh, how disappointing. Ah, two uselesses. Go away, uselesses. Nobody wanted you. And we're back at the jungle. However, this is starting to look a bit more promising. Oh, hello, we've got a bunch of drowned. Useless. You're useless. I think you're useless. Yes, you are. And you are useless. Ooh, this might be a warm ocean. Oh, you've got trident. Would you... I haven't got it. Right. Oh, I've got two. Oh, excuse me. Useless. Nobody asked you. Or your child. All right, and you got a trident. No, you're a useless. Uh, you're a useless. You're a useless. You're a useless. Stop taking up the mob cap, useless. You're a useless. 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 And don't forget, you're useless. 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 Trident! Come here. That's not a trident, that's an autumn shell. Trident guy! Are you going to share? Share your toys? No. No, you are not. Oh, go away, useless. Trident guy! Useless, get out of my way. Yeah, right. Come here, give me your trident! Yes! Right. That should be number three. One more to go. Useless, 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 useless. Completely useless. Trident guy! Go away, useless. You're in the way. Thank you. Yes! Ha ha! Huzzah! We finally have done it. Wait, where'd it go? There it is. Ha ha, we now have four tridents ready for four trident killers. Thank goodness. Now, 
How the heck do I get home from here? Ooh, hello skeletons. I decided to take a quick look at Chunk Base to see if there's anything worth exploring on the way back. And according to that, there is supposed to be a witch's hut right here. There is not. Between the spawners and the witch's hut now not appearing, I'm thinking something might be very wrong going on uh, with this seed. Uh, but we shall persevere. Reef though. That's nice. I could probably do with some coral fans. Um, as soon as these two uselesses jog on. Thank you. Now, coral fans. Hello. Here we go. Let's pick up a few. And we have an extra trident. That's nice. So, final total was six tridents. That was successful after a disastrous start. Also got ourselves a, a few coral fans that'll be useful now we just need to get some observers and pistons as you can see i've gotten a little carried away getting started on this mob farm even going so far as to put some uh, design elements in place uh, but the basics of it are down uh, but we're nowhere near complete we've got a trident killer down here uh, water feeding them in there water feeding them in there i need to decide what i'm going to do on the tops of these i'm thinking maybe a fire so that mobs don't get stuck uh, hiding up there uh, the main gist of it is uh, the same as you see with an awful lot of mob farms, and it's going to be uh, different to how I do the early mob farm. Uh, so we have uh, scaffolding all along the base um, with water at the second block. Uh, this will cause the mobs that form to get driven along here and fall down the gaps where I put coral fi fans to stop things from trying to fight uh, against water and allow zombie children to run off uh, as you can see they drop straight down to there i'm gonna have to put uh duct tinted glass all along here to ensure that the light doesn't come up but now we're going to build out a second layer and then the third layer um the reason for that is down to the spawning mechanics and i'll explain that in a moment and we have ourselves a working proof of concept if we look down here, <laughs> XP balls are everywhere. Uh, we ended up having to use uh, six tridents. Uh, yeah, that was a, an expensive trip. Um, and I had to go back and get some coral fans as well. But on the plus side, it is now working. If we nip down here, uh, I've only been running about a minute. Um, well, I'm going to have to work out a way to get to the boxes. There we go. A few spider eyes, but zombie flesh, carrot, and uh, yeah, we had one of the wandering traders decide to get himself stuck in there. So uh, that's his own problem at that point. But excellent. Right now, we just need to build a couple more layers because we only have the one layer, and then we need to build ourselves an AFK spot because that makes a big difference for spawning. Well, as you can see, the build is going very well. Unfortunately. I'm going to need a lot more tinted glass, which means a lot more amethyst, because at the moment they can fall down and it comes out. They can force themselves to come out over here. Oh no, creep up. Yeah, so <laughs> we need to close that off and I want to do it with tinted glass. Uh, however, the one <laughs> amethyst geo that we found, it's not going to produce the numbers that we need to do it quickly, which means we need to go on a hunt. Uh, thankfully, Chunk Base is uh, forgiving in that situation, uh, and we're going to be taking advantage of that and going down where it looks like there's probably a, a fair few geodes, uh, at least two, if not three. So rather than waiting around watching paint dry and waiting for amethyst to grow, let's take ourselves down to a geode. Apparently, if I dig straight down here, I should find myself a geode. This went so well last time. Hello, drowned. I'm going to have to do it again. Let's see how we go. <laughs> well, that went a lot better than last time. Happy days. Nothing else has grown yet, so let's free up some spaces so that we've got a bit more room for them to be growing. Okay, we're going to have to wait for that to grow. So let's have a bit of an explore. What have we got going on around here? Uh, stuff. That's another geode. 
Hello. And also go away whatever zombie I just hid. Uh, right, let's get over there. Quick bridge should do. Not in the mood for being attacked, whoever noises I'm hearing from. If you don't mind, I want to find another geode. Oh, I should have brought some um, scaffolding with me. Ah, uh, that was silly, silly scoff. Silly, silly, silly scoff. Okay, well, let's just take that out. And then hop on up here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do that this way. And I'll come down with some scaffolding to make this easier. Oh, we've got a couple of grown ones. Not particularly big geode, it's half a geode. But it's in the same spot, which will make growing it that much easier. Okay, this is very good news. Unfortunately, some footage got corrupted and we missed out on that. But as you can see, we have built an awful lot of tinted glass, running all the way from the bottom right to the top. You can just about see through. Yet yeah, there's a zombie being knocked back and forth. And now he's taking the damage. Good, right, okay. Uh, the looting sword, which I'm holding now, ensures that the looting effect takes place. One of the big advantages of bedrock. We also went with a three wide, uh, so, uh, nine block, uh, three by three trident killer, which is an unusual way of doing it, and involved six tridents, uh, very expensive. Obviously, I couldn't resist going with the faces. I just think it brings a certain something. Not only am I the emperor that conquered the nether, I also conquered those evil monsters, making them bend to my will and give me their loot. Now, let's talk about the theory of how all this works. To begin with, the most important point will be funneling all the monsters into a kill chamber. That could be a trident killer, as we've got going down there, and there's a couple of different designs available for that. But equally, it could be uh, going onto fire, or cactus, or magma blocks, or any other method you might have for killing the monsters. With our trident killer, what we're doing is we are funneling these monsters into a space where a trident is going back and forth. That simulates me throwing a trident, and we'll kill them, dropping their loot. It's important then that you have some hoppers or other things underneath to ensure that you're grabbing the loot before it can be destroyed or despawned. For our purposes, there are two types of hostile mobs that we can be looking to farm. These mob farms simulate what is called cave spawns. These are hostile mobs that spawn purely inside caves. The entire point of having walls and a roof, or particularly the roof is the important part, is that you're simulating them spawning inside a cave. Because we're using a trident killer, it's what's known as an active uh, kill chamber. So that means the game thinks that we are killing them ourselves. And as you can see, it's dropping a fair amount of loot. This has just been happening while I'm doing the uh, there's a design work uh, around the mob farm, so this is all stuff that is passively being collected. Now, if we head up onto the uh, top of the roof, uh, you'll see what's going on inside. Let's just quickly break a couple of blocks. But any mob farm is going to need a way of using water, mostly, uh, to shift the mobs into the kill chamber. So as you can see, we've got bamboo with water coming at the top level. This means that anything with water at the head height spawns and is immediately pushed towards the kill chamber. That does create a problem with some mobs. Spiders in particular are a bit of a nightmare, but also zombie children, which is why we use coral fans or trapdoors uh, to make the zombie children think that they can get off the edge and they will eventually run off. Uh, but spiders in particular can be a little bit of a pain in the bum. Now, let's talk a little bit about the spawning. Now, cave spawns, which is what we're simulating when we're creating a mob spawner, spawn within a very narrow radius. Uh, they have to be uh, further away than 24 blocks from the player and no further than 44 blocks. That is very important and a narrow window. If you have a larger simulation distance than the standard four, that number rises, but realms uh, and most computers will be running on simula simulation distance four. Which means that if it ever goes outside of that 44 block radius, it will instantly despawn and be no use to your mob spawner. To spawn a mob, the game will look inside your simulation distance, usually four chunks, and choose a random X and Z uh, coordinate to spawn mobs in. They then start right from the very top and work their way down, trying to spawn mobs at each location. Each location then has to meet a set criteria, such as the light level being zero and it being within the right radius. There are also mob caps to consider, but that's outside the scope of what we're trying to learn about today. 
One important factor is that once the game spawns one of the mobs, it still continues down the same Y coordinates, continuing to try spawn additional mobs, which is why additional layers in a mob farm is a very useful thing indeed. So, to summarise what we've learned, we need to be ensuring that we're getting our cave mobs to have a roof above their heads to ensure that they are cave mobs. We also need to ensure that the uh, spawning distance is fitting that 24 to 44 block radius. So you need your AFK platform to include both the uh, area that the mobs are spawning in and the kill chamber below it. You then need some way of moving the mobs from where they are spawned into your kill chamber. So water is usually the best way of doing it. You could do that via the bamboo method I'm using here, or you could do that via a, a water clock, which I'll be showing you uh, in the next video. You need a method of killing them. The best method is via the uh, trident killers that's so popular on bedrock, uh, but aren't available in the Java version. Uh, other methods include fire, which we'll be using in the next one, uh, or cactus or magma. Uh, beware of cactus, however, because they could also destroy the drops that the mobs leave behind. And finally we learned that the X and Z coordinates are important, so the wider the platform you have, uh, the better within your spawn radius, and also the Y coordinate is very important because bedrock spawns from the top down, so having additional layers means that you can have additional mobs forming within your radius. Uh, if you are not building it in the sky, it's important that you then light up any caves beneath it to stop mobs from forming outside of your mob farm. So with all that being said and done, thank you very much for watching. In the next day or so, we should have a video tutorial out on how to build an early game mob farm, one that doesn't require bamboo or even a trident killer if you don't wish it to. And in the next episode, we'll be freeing our empire from that evil dragon. Catch you on the next one.